hello and welcome back to day two of the Prime Day sales. If you didn't catch my video yesterday, this is a video where I go through lots of deals that I found on Amazon Prime during their big seasonal event that I would personally buy. And although none of the deals that I'm going to show you today I'm actually going to buy, unlike some of the ones from yesterday, that's largely because some of the best deals right now are aren't in this country, as you're sure to find out. But real quick, um, yesterday we didn't give any kind of attention to Canada, and that was largely because at the time of recording, uh, the Canadian uh, Amazon Prime sale had not begun. So we can go straight into there, because there are some lovely little sneaky under-the-radar deals there for our friends in Canada. Uh, just before we do that, though, do bear in mind, uh, there is a link in the description to the NAS Compare article here, and myself and Eddie and a bunch of you guys have been adding deals that you found online to this list, and they're rated on there. You can rate them up, rate them down, add your own deals in there. They're listed by country. They're all listed down there. So although I've not added any of the deals I'm going to mention in this video yet, I'm going to do that when the video is encoding, there are still bloody loads of deals on there, and as they are dropping off the radar, people are flagging them and removing them, and me and Eddie are trying to get rid of the ones that are clearly not deals that are on there. Something I'm going to talk about more at the end of the video. But straight into Amazon Canada there, with their Prime Day now finally open. Straight away, the big boy, it is the Synology DS920. This is a NAS I've not seen on offer much this Prime Day. It was available on offer last year, it was on during Black Friday, but very few regions have had this. And I saw it in some snap sales on other websites. But in Amazon Canada, you can now pick up the Synology DS920 for $584 uh, Canadian dollars there. But I will highlight again, the non-deal price is a little inflated. I would normally say this retails um, a little lower than that. But it's still, that's not a terrible price for the 920 nonetheless. And, you know, uh, if you can get it near you and shipping isn't going to be too much of a bane, that's actually a really nice price for probably one of the most popular Synology NASs of recent years. Uh, carrying on with Synology, the 2-Bay is also on offer over in Canada at $324. And although it's not as big a discount, you can see they're 14% down from 379 it's still a pretty good price for an Intel dual-core powered 2-bay that can run pretty much everything in DSM-7. Um, and for you budget buyers, they have got the DS220J uh, as well. Um, now this one, again, the deals are getting progressively worse, I would argue, even though the price uh, is slightly better in terms of the price drop there. This is a very weak NAS, and although it runs DSM 7.1, uh, it doesn't run it exactly, you know, it's not going to take your breath away. Uh, and I would highlight as well, if you go back to that page, although we've added some of these deals already, if you do click one of these links, it will take you to the Amazon in your region. And what that means is, if that is in offer in your region, it will take you to it. So don't worry too much if you're not in Canada and you're thinking if the D920 is on offer, you can either head there yourself or use the quick link from that list and go straight into the 920 or go to the bottom where we've listed different items there that are recommended to look out for and add to um, kind of hot lists and alert lists as well. Um, Carrying on with Canada, if you already own uh, a 2020 or 21 or even 22 series NAS, uh, the crucial 16 gig DDR4 module is knocking around for just $66 at the moment. And although it's an unofficial upgrade, and this works for QNAP and Synology and Terramaster and Acer Store, that is a decent amount of memory, and it's a 3200 uh, megahertz uh, faster sodium module as well in DDR4. It's not ECC, but it's still a pretty darn good module there, and again, very good pricing. And some of the other smaller capacities are on offer as well. Um, with Sega Ironwolf, their drives seem to have been quite later to the deal part. Yesterday we saw loads of WD and they're still in later in the video. But in Amazon Canada you can get the 4TB for $94. Not a great drop, it's only a 5 nicker realistically. But again, when you reach this point, the discounts are 5 to $10. And we will touch on uh, the nature of deals at the end of this video as well. Finally, this is an interesting one, and this is thanks to a colleague uh, in France, um, Uniasign, Uni Uni uh, these kind of unbranded external drives in 1TB, 500, 3200, etc., they are dirt cheap. And the worry is when you buy an external drive is you don't know what drive is inside. Uh, and luckily, I know someone that has purchased one of these, and it is a WD Blue 
drive inside. And again, it's various different capacities, but if you were to try to buy that drive on its own right now, it's £46 um, uh, pounds in the UK. And again, this is $50 Canadian and is an external USB drive with the drive inside. That 100% is that WD drive inside there. So again, as soon as you know what drive is inside, it's actually a pretty darn good drive, whether it's going to be used for PC, gaming, NAS backups, whatever. Um, so moving away from there, we can have a look at Amazon US. And Amazon US, again, most of the good, good, good deals were yesterday. There's still some in there. Uh, which we'll go into, but the best deals kind of went out yesterday for the guys in the US. So, for example, the 220 is in the Prime Day sales now, which is always good to hear, down from 299 to 245. You know, this is the price I expect to pay for this NAS, particularly in 2022. I'd even hope it to be a pinch lower, but 245 for this two bay is a pretty darn good deal. Um, and that's probably one of the best um, US deals right now in terms of NAS buying. In terms of drive, the ATB is still available. We talked about the Pro Series, but the standard drive there is still currently available. Again, that is an 8 terabyte drive for $130, which is pretty good when you think about it. 8 terabytes of storage. Uh, but we will be talking later on about uh, presentation on Amazon and errors that I've noticed as well later in the video. Uh, you, regarding this bar and the capacity here, later on, do stick around for a few more minutes later into the video where I will talk about some of the errors I found uh, during the Prime Day sales that a lot of people have been caught up in. Um, another great little NAS on offer is the 2453D. Now, this is a better NAS hardware-wise than that DS220 I mentioned. The software, once again, isn't quite as good as the Synology, and this is QNAP's, uh, although it's currently available, the previous gen, um, uh, whereas the new gen is 264 or the 464 series, but this is still a quad-core 4 gig DDR4 Intel-powered NAS with a PCIe upgrade slot, 2.5 GBE, 4K HDMI. It's just a powerhouse of a unit there. And the only reason I put it even slightly behind the DS220 uh, Plus, and I'm talking very, very small, is simply because of the Synology software. In terms of hardware, this thing is insane. And again, I've been using a 5.3D here in the studio now since it first launched. I strongly recommend it. Um, Moving forward, the Terra Masters, a few more Terra Masters have appeared on sale, such as this one. This is that kind of lower end five bay. And again, for $300, I, I know right now, $300 for that five bay, and that was 250 for the two bay does raise questions, but this is a dual core, kind of two or three generations older Intel CPU. It's good, but it's not breathtaking. But as a localized network backup or something you want to stick a USB in and bung on, you know, unraid or even, I'm not sure you get true NAS out of this, it's a decent little unit there. Uh, moving forward, someone uh, messaged me in the comments yesterday about Toshiba drives because Toshiba drives, the N300 and N300 Pro are on offering a lot of places right now. Do I recommend them? And the answer is, I do, but with a caveat, bear in mind that every single one of these drives you see on screen is 7200 RPM. They all have quite a large amount of cache. They are designed for very high performance. The result is they're quite noisy. So do bear in mind that with these drives, what you're getting is a noisier drive. And in a two or four bay, you're going to be in the same room as you are going to hear it in operation. That's really the only downside to a Toshiba drive. I should talk about them more on the channel. Just bear in mind, the logic is the N is the NAS series. The Pro is kind of the larger capacity NAS series. And the X is the enterprise level series. But it's enterprise single drive performance, not like comparable to WD Black or their MG Enterprise series there. Um, and as you can see, the 10 TB drive there, it's probably for me the pick. It's $220, but it's a 10 terabyte hard drive. I mean, come on. Uh, next up, we can go to the UK. The office of the UK didn't exactly knock me, you know, knock me down, to be honest. I was looking along, kind of looked at things. I found this 8 gig DDR4 upgrade module, much like the one we saw before. And it's only 20 nicker, so it's, you know, that's a pretty good deal for an 8 gig NAS upgrade or even a laptop upgrade at DDR4 at that performance. Most laptops released, you know, before now are DDR4. It has to be said DDR5 is out there, but is by no means mainstream yet. Uh, moving forward, Rio Link, uh, camera band I talk about a lot on the channel. They're always in the background or in the foreground of my videos. Uh, they've put m the majority of their cameras on discounts somewhere ranging from 15 to even 40 or even 50 percent in some places some really good discounts there if you are looking at ip cameras just make sure you look for cameras that are onvif or onviv 
for surveillance there. Um, moving forward, every year we talk about this, what's one of the cheapest switches we can find, and this isn't even the cheapest one gig switch I could find. You're gonna see that later on. But this is $12.99 for a Netgear five port switch. It's not smart, but again, for that sort of money to upgrade your wired network connectivity and bolster your bandwidth to different wired devices, it's a steal at that price. It's not a great drop down in price, but once again, when you reach this price point, discounts are much, much harder to kind of scrape off the profit margin. And um, in terms of network upgrades, we can talk about this. This is a 2.5 GBE to USB adapter. It's 23 Nicker. It's again, not the cheapest I've seen, but it's a USB-C dedicated one without those silly little adapter changes at the top. And it allows you to add a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port to a NAS, the majority of them anyway that have the driver, a laptop, a PC, etc, etc. So again, nice little adapter there, decent little price. And if you're looking at a PCIe adapter, there is a 21 Nicker um your pcie up adapter there once again small discount small margins but again 2.5 gigabit upgrades very very easy they've got the changeable back planes i recommend it um terramaster once again still appearing this is a 10 gig um two by from them so you know even if you use sata hard uh, sata ssds you are never going to fully saturate that 10g as i mentioned in my review but for 271 quid a two bay that's got 10 gigabit ethernet and a quad core cpu inside there and four gig of memory that can be upgraded to eight that is pretty good bear in mind the price of some of the NASs we've spoken about that were at 250 this is a 10 gig two bay that goes for just another 20 odd nicker it's a good good price there and another terramaster someone else raised this yesterday about my thoughts on thunderbolt daz from terramaster and again they do the job. They are not the prettiest devices, let's be honest about it. And this chassis with the weird handle, I've never quite understood. But I do personally use a, a Thunderbolt 2 bay for one of my staged backups. Just outside of the studio, you've probably seen it in the background of the News of the Week videos. You know, I do rate them for a RAID-enabled 5 bay, particularly with Drobo now out of the picture and the likes of Lacey and GTEC providing only pre-populated solutions. You know, this is a good price, 479 if you want to go for this device. But do bear in mind, of course, that you're going to have to have the Prime Day. Otherwise, it's 599 to everyone else. So moving forward, we can go and make our way into Germany. And this is where the deals are going to get a bit fewer and further between. Following up the 2-bay QNAP expansion that was on offer we talked about yesterday, now the 4-bay um, hardware RAID-enabled solution is out there. So this is a USB um, hardware RAID box uh, that you can use to expand a NAS or just use the general DAS solution there. And again, an expansion for 157 Nicker when Synology's 5 bay J BOD is 350 to 400 quid. This is a decent little deal there. And for those of you that have got a QNAP that want to add storage, this is a good way to go. And bear in mind that the 2 bay we mentioned earlier on does support this expansion device. Again, NAS upgrades, 4 gig, 22 euros. I won't labor this point too much. I've already talked about how useful that will be. The only thing I would add is that this 4 gig means that if you use it in any of the 2020 gen that had an 8 gig memory maximum, you're not going to be exceeding that maximum amount. It's only going to cost you 22 nicker, um, or euro nicker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, lastly, Seagate, once again, are back in the picture later in the day. This is 89 quid, uh, for 89 euros uh, for a 4 TB, which doesn't sound like a tremendous deal when we go back to the Toshibas we mentioned earlier, but it's not a terrible price for a Seagate driver that's got the health recovery service that is a 5900 RPM drive. And again, I've used this before, I've used them in the studio, they're good drives. Um, coming out of there, we talk about France, we've only got a couple more regions left, but stay tuned for the last one there. And we first have got this SSD. Now, <clears throat> in of itself, it doesn't seem like a great deal. This is a SATA SSD. Uh, you know, when you look at it, this is a 1TB SATA SSD for 67 quid. Why am I raising this? Well, if you look at a 1TB NAS hard drive, um, it is 65 euros. If you were looking at populating a NAS in, uh, if you're shopping in Amazon France, right now you can either spend 65 pounds on one terabyte of hard drive or 67 euros, I should say, for buying an SSD. And I know it's 67.99, but the point still remains. It used to be that SSDs were three to five times the cost of hard drives, and now 
you could populate this quite comfortably and just bear in mind as you go to the larger capacities obviously the prices scale but if you were only going to be working with terabytes anyway this is a great way to get a very very fast storage array which although capacity may be a tad, a tad limited is still going to be much much faster and quite economical compared with hard drives there again going back to switches this was by far the cheapest one gig switch i could find this is eight euros for a five port one gigabit ethernet switch i mean come on that's insane like looking at that that is i mean obviously it's tender they are an economy line anyway but when it comes to upgrading your network that's kind of unbeatable at that price you know i'm not i think these days a mcdonald's meal costs more than that so again strongly recommended again not a tremendous discount but it's a good discount nonetheless um and again next up i'm going to talk about wd another question someone uh, messaged me about yesterday what are my thoughts on wd red pro uh, w uh, my cloud pros are appearing during all of the sales nice and simple i would avoid them um, as much as i like their hard drives the software support on these devices is getting very close to end of life and I do believe WD is probably going to stop supporting the software in these devices relatively soon. Particularly if you bought it now and it's got a three year warranty, I don't think the software is going to last three more years of support from WD and they do seem to be slowly pulling out of NAS, something I've been saying for a few years and although it still does the job, it's a mid-range Pentium powered plex nas there at 373 i just don't think it's worth it anymore so if you see this i personally would not recommend it as a deal even though it is a deal i would recommend it as long term it's not worth it anymore and that price tag you're seeing is based on the rrp which was a long 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 time ago i think 2016-17 now um Moving forward uh, for PS5 upgrades, we're not talking much about for you guys today. We've got the Samsung 980 Pro for you guys in France. There again, it's only a good deal if you take into account the fact that it's got the heatsink on board. I talked about this yesterday, but I just wanted to kind of reaffirm that point. Um, getting an SSD with a first-party heatsink means that the SSD heatsink is being applied at a factory level in a dust-controlled environment, normally with um, thermal padding, uh, any silicon being applied more precisely to the controllers rather than a generic heatsink. So if you were considering the Samsung anyway, go for the one with a heatsink while it's on offer in numerous regions. Now, finally, I want to talk about Australia. Um, I feel like I should turn the laptop upside down, but... When it comes to Australian deals, I've got to say, you guys have been screwed over. It's as simple as that. It is not fair how terrible the deals you guys have received during this. One of you raised this with me in the comments, and I kind of looked, and I thought, it can't be that bad. It's bad. I had to scrape to find deals. And even the ones I found, I'm not going to call them deals. I'm including them as examples of why uh, the Australian audience for Amazon have been done over something chronic. Um, so this is the best I could find in terms of storage. I would buy this. It's $128 4TB external. It's still more expensive than I would like to spend, but it is definitely cheaper than 4TB of anything else on the Australian uh, Amazon website right now that I would call palatable. And it is a relatively decent discount. And, you know, for a NAS backup, a console backup, it's not the end of the world. But after that, look at some of this nonsense so first and foremost we've got the 60b nas iron wolf now yes that is australian dollars taking conversions into account it's not you know it's not a horrendous price but i wouldn't call it hugely appealing but what's really depressing is when you look at the price drops so regular price 215 so you're already looking at a price drop of less than five dollars based on that number there with the taking the cents into account but then it's got was 221 ultimately this is not a real deal. And this is what I kept finding when I was looking at the Australian Amazon pages. For example, the WD Black. This was another one of the examples of drives that I saw where the pricing just seemed a bit askew. Like I would look at some of these drives and be like, oh, okay, they're listing it as a deal, $91. Oh, originally $95. So $4. And again, this isn't even the best WD Black SSD. This is the SN7700, the efficient one using the host buffer uh, host manage buffer uh, and then we i looked at the fire cuda 1tb and this is where i started to see more errors um, because again it happened in different regions but in australia's amazon pages 
I would see the deal, 191, and it was down from 198, so already, it's all right. Uh, but then I noticed, 1TB, I then noticed 500 gig. And it just kept occurring, and there were lots and lots and lots of drives that had been listed wrong. I'm sure it's an automated thing, but I was very surprised to see, as you see, 1TB solid state, uh, capacity, 500 gig. And it was just a common occurrence. And it seemed like a lot of people might be expecting to get larger drives than they, in fact, are. And it made that price slightly invalidated. But I'll stop harping on. This is probably the last time I'm going to talk about uh, Prime Day here on the channel. I'm not, I can't see anything else deal-wise coming up. If there is anything half-decent tomorrow, I'll make a quick three- to five-minute video for you guys. But this has really been it. If you have to ask me, ask me what's the best deal there, definitely some of those NASs. Canada has come in very, very strong now with a lot of those NAS offerings. I do think some of those two base, like the 220 Plus and the 253D in the US, for me, were kind of stand out. Those Toshiba drives were pretty good. Let's find the uh, two base. And, of course, in the UK there, that 10 GBE 2 bay was actually pretty good too. Um, but, again, I will start adding all of these, or at least the ones that I think are relevant. Sorry, Aussies, they just did not cut it. I'll start adding those to the list. So, again, I'll either link them to the description below, or you can go through this article and find all the current deals listed on Prime Day there with links towards them, as well as details on the individual discounts. But, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This video has not been monetized. This is just about finding deals that I would personally buy. But apart from that... Click like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to learn more as we talk more raw about storage in 2022. I hope you got something you actually needed during Prime Day. And other than that, I will see you next time.